Perfect. Uh, let's start. First of all, thank you very much for joining another edition of the Into the Blog webinar uh, series where we try to cover some of the cutting edge uh, topics in, uh, related to crypto uh, analytics. Today is uh, is super exciting because we're gonna uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, social analytics and some uh, I'll say a little bit more forward thinking ideas in the space. And this session covers a lot of topics related to machine learning. So it's just, uh, we're gonna talk at the intersection of machine learning and, and crypto. And we're gonna cover a lot of sort of cutting edge ideas on deep learning and machine learning. But hopefully, I'll be able to explain this in a way that makes sense. Uh, for um, uh, for everyone. Uh, so the agenda for today is super, super simple. So we're going to talk about sort of the traditional way in which we think about uh, analytics when it comes to social media news and social fees in, in the crypto space. Then uh, I'm going to take a, a few minutes to tell you what has been happening in the language understanding, in the language analytics space in the last uh, in the last few years, uh, particularly focusing on these uh, trends uh, related to transformer architectures and the maximum expression of it, that is a GPT-3 uh, model created by, uh, by OpenAI. And the last part, we're going to talk about what is possible with those type of models and, uh, and some of the things that we're doing uh, in the, and into the blog that you're going to be seeing in the next, uh, in the next few months uh, in, the, in production in our platform. A couple of logistic aspects as, as always, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to use the chat or the Q&A panel. I'll stop multiple times uh, during the presentation to, uh, to take questions. So don't wait, uh, don't necessarily wait uh, until, uh, until the very end. And, and we'll try to keep it informal and, and, uh, and fun. Um, so as always, I would like to start with a quick update about the uh, what has been happening into the blog in the last uh, in the last few weeks, we just had we closed a monster Q1 uh, quarter. Like literally, we more than double uh, the number of subscriptions in our retail platform. And I cannot even tell you what's happening on the quant side because we we're getting uh, a lot of traction uh, with uh, uh, with sort of the work that we're doing on DeFi uh, quant strategies and things like that. One thing that was very notorious in the last few weeks, there are a few new customer uh, launches such as Luna that uh, uh, that we have had a, a very uh, uh, a, an amazing partnership with this group uh, with this exchange, and and now we are they're using into the blog analytics across different. Uh, properties and this they did a, a new launch in their uh, in their wallet uh, property. We also launched with a Korean exchange called DAX, and you're gonna see some very very high profile uh, launches being announced in the next uh, in the next few days. Uh, a little bit of uh, miscellaneous uh, news is that into the blog launch uh, a much needed upgrade to to our corporate to the institutional website, not not the platform website, but our, our corporate website. So now it has a lot more information. Uh, and it's more up to date with, uh, with what we're doing, uh, we, we have been doing in the last year or so. So it was a, a good a good effort by our design team. So, uh, and, uh, I, and I think it looks very nice. And then in the, in the next few weeks, you're gonna see a lot of exciting releases from us. So um, in, in just a few days, we're gonna be announcing a, a new package of analytics for the Curve protocol that will be an addition to our uh, DeFi analytics. Then we're working on a ton of new indicators based on blockchain data for ownership, whales, miners, exchanges, things like that, who owns what. Uh, we're working on such analytics and you're gonna get a flavor of, of how that's gonna look like uh, today, at least what's the foundation that we're operating on them. And, uh, and, and then we're making progress on NFT analytics, hopefully launch one of the most complete uh, NFT analytics catalogs in the market. So this is all uh, I have uh, for you in terms of into the blog today. So let's dive in into uh, the content of, uh, uh, of the session today. So uh, I would like to start by just recapping or providing sort of a, um, an overview of what's a traditional perspective when of analyzing news and, uh, uh, and social media uh, in, the, in the crypto space. So a key question that we ask ourselves uh, and investors, uh, investors and traders in the space uh, they've wrestled with is whether we can actually extract alpha 
by analyzing uh, social data from uh, or, or news from crypto assets. And there, there's all sorts of very opinionated people in, ta in this space, but there is also very little to show for in terms of actionable uh, analytics. So the question is maybe, uh, so th there is certainly in an irrational market in an inefficient market, there is a lot that, that you can do. News certainly move the space, but, but it's, it's just hard to quantify and to make it actionable. So maybe there is an alpha to be extracted, but it's far from being trivial and, and, uh, and simple. Certainly today, crypto markets remain highly inefficient and dominated uh, by, by narrative across a large number and, and diverse number of, of, of different sources like Twitter, Telegram, uh, Discord, uh, some prominent uh, news outlet. So there, there's definitely when when there's impactful news published through uh, those channels, you can see movements in the markets. But the problem is that narrative are just very hard to quantify. Like uh, you can uh, the the way that we reason about language, you can extrapolate some subjective conclusions about things. But when it comes to building quantitative models uh, around that information, it becomes very very hard. So bottom line, I mean, uh, here I'm, I'm probably generalizing uh, a little bit, but when you think about the way that we're analyzing uh, so textual data in, in uh, crypto, and by us, we actually, I, I also include into the blog in, the, in this pocket, we can divide it in two main groups. So you have uh, social channels like Twitter, Telegram, Discord, uh, Redis, and things like that, and you have news. And those two, uh, they, they sort of belong in different categories. These are short form, very opinionated uh, sort of textual information and news are more long form uh, 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 type of uh, text. On the, on the social side, then sentiment analysis is the type of technique that, that prevails, right? Trying to assign a specific score uh, to a text where on the news side, extracting topics like key ideas uh, or, or entities from the, um, uh, from news is also the, the dominant technique. Uh, we actually implemented both of those techniques in Into the Block. So when you think, if you go to a social uh, analytics for all cryptos, you can see some, some very interesting uh, sentiment analysis models that we built specifically for crypto. This is not a third party API or anything like that. It's most trained in, in a corpus of crypto, uh, of crypto uh, data, but essentially sentiment analysis focuses on, on assigning a score on a narrative, on a textual narrative that gives you uh, a measure of whether it's positive, negative, or, uh, or, or neutral. And, and that's sort of the, the, uh, sort of the output of that type of technique. And topic that you can also see related to news is a technique that tries to extrapolate key entities or key topics or key subjects in a specific uh, narrative. So you can sort of uh, look at different news and try to identify what are the key topics that are that those news are are related to. So I, I said this many times uh, before. I think I even published an article in CoinDesk about this. Uh, the reason we divide the world between news and and news with topics and sentiment uh, with social data is because news by, by itself they shouldn't have sentiment, right? They should be neutral, uh, well written news, and then uh, social data fees they shouldn't have. Uh, a lot of uh, topic information because they're very short. They, they, they use back grammar and emojis and, and all sort, like the sort of things like that, particularly in crypto. So that's a good, uh, uh, a good division. So I, I would like to point out a few key things about this. Uh, when you think about topic and, uh, and sentiment analysis, they're both what we call, they're task specific, like they do one thing and their reduction is technique. So they take a large, uh, pool of data or, or, or text and reduce it to something like one number, uh, a, a number of topics. Uh, they, when you build this type of models, they're very computationally uh, intensive. So you need to train them before, right? So you need to train a model, a sentiment model in the corpus of crypto, like what's this an exchange and what is the SEC and those type of things. I need to retrain it uh, periodically. And then in, in the crypto space, there, is, there are very uh, many noisy channels. So you have Twitter and Telegram and things like that, and people trying to manipulate the market. So navigating, adapting those models to those, that is the specifics of that environment is very, very, um, uh, very, very challenging. So in, in general, I, I, um, when you think about sentiment and topic analysis, they're 
they're very task specific techniques and they're efficient as an informational uh, type of uh, uh, method, but they're hardly actionable. And, and from a cognitive standpoint, uh, they sort of differ a little bit from the way we reason when we read text or, or news or things like that. So humans, we were very good at consuming many sources of information and extrapolating uh, uh, um, concepts and ideas across them and try to master, to do uh, multiple language linguistic tasks at the same time. This is very different than what you're doing with a sentiment or, or topic analysis uh, technique. By the way, this is a problem of language analysis in general, but when you apply it to crypto, it, it even takes a different, uh, a different connotation. So uh, today with recent advancements in, uh, uh, in natural language understanding, we can do so much more than what we're doing today uh, with, uh, uh, with sentiment and topic uh, analysis. So in the last few years, there have been what many consider to be the, the most groundbreaking um, milestone in the last 10 years, in the last decade of, of deep learning. And that has been led by this type of architecture called transformers or in the or language pre-trained um, models. Th those terms can be used uh, relatively inter interchangeably when it comes to, to language understanding. Of course, you have heard about this type of model called uh, GPT-3 that was created by the AI lab uh, OpenAI and has made the news many times for generating uh, fake narrative and news. I think there is even an example of, uh, of some news and in hard text uh, about Bitcoin that was produced by a GPT-3 model and is literally indistingu indistinguishable from a human written uh, text. So there have been a lot of uh, interesting applications about this, but GPT-3 is just one example of this type of architecture it just happened to be the most famous example uh, of it. So this whole story started in 2018 with a paper published by the by Google's research called Attention is All You Need. And it's, it's become arguably the most famous paper of the last five years of uh, deep learning and, and opened the door to, to an entire revolution uh, in the space. So the, the this paper, what it did in essence was did two things. It provided a new type of architecture called the transformer and it introduced a new model called Google BERT that was a predecessor of OpenAI GPT-3. So the way the transformer architecture uh, works with, uh, it introduces this notion of what we call attention mechanisms that essentially, if you think about any language model, topic analysis, sent analysis, sentiment analysis, translation, anything that operates in language, at a high level, all these models do one thing that is predict the next word in a sentence or in, in a given sentence. So all of them, they summarize to, to that type of, of task, right? You, you have, uh, if you're translating something, you're translating word by word and you need to predict the next word based on a, a ton of, uh, a ton of previous words. Obviously, you need to do much more, but but that's a key task. And uh, all the architectures in the space, you, you were talking about things like recurrent neural networks, long short term memory networks. Uh, they had to go back in time. They have to go back multiple iterations of text to try to make a prediction because in order to 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 predict the word, you need to understand the context, uh, previous sentences, and things like that. And when you were operating with large text that became very unfeasible. That's what a lot of machine translation techniques work well in one or two paragraphs, but very badly in very, if you're trying to traduce, to, uh, 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 to translate the war and peace uh, text, right? So the attention mechanism was a technique that was created to essentially identify key pieces, areas that you need to pay attention to in the previous words in order to predict the next word efficiently. And that was such a clever thing to do, but it, 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 it uh, resulted in very computationally efficient uh, mechanism. And it just happened that the first wave of applications for transformers happened to place in language with, with models such as uh, GPT-3. So the transformer architecture has completely uh, revolutionized language. And in the context of language, uh, they're known as what we call language pre-trained models, which essentially, these are models that are 
train on a, you know, a lot of text, let's say Wikipedia, the entire Wikipedia corpus. And then they're fine tuned for doing one specific things, generating fake news, uh, translation or things like that. So you're gonna start with a model that knows a lot about uh, a lot of things that the, the analogies that we use is, is a well-read human being, right? It's an expert, it's a professor, knows a lot of, about a lot of things and you adapt that knowledge to one specific thing. But the result of that is that now we have models that can do many things at the same time. So instead of doing sentiment analysis or topic analysis, they can do sentiment, they can do topics, they can do translations, they can do question answering, they can do a lot of things with a single model. And that has been completely revolutionary. That was really, really hard to achieve uh, before. So what happened after this is that has been our arms race in terms of innovation between Google, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, OpenAI, creating different transformer models. And uh, Google has this thing called Ro uh, BERT and Facebook has this thing called Roberta. Microsoft released a model called Turing NLG. And obviously OpenAI did GPT-3 that just become very, very famous. But the thing that you need to understand about these models is they're huge, massive. So literally this is a, 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 a graph that shows the number of parameters that these models manage and they're in the billions. So GPT, it was a race at GPT-2 used to be the, uh, the biggest one. Then Microsoft broke all the records launching a thing called Turing NLG that used 17 billion parameters. And then GPT-3 came with like 170 billion parameters and, and it was used, GPT-3 was just GPT-2 with a lot of more computation uh, for the most part. And just earlier this year, Google trained a model called the extended transformer in a trillion parameters. So it's this massive, like in terms of our size, that you need many, many servers to be able to run these models. So that has been the history of natural language since 2018. A lot has been happening in the space. And when you go back and say, well, when you try to apply that into crypto, uh, the way we understand news, the way we analyze uh, Twitter feeds and Telegram feeds, it opens the door to all sorts of new uh, possibility. So what I would like to do with the last part of this presentation is to walk you through some of the most sort of um, uh, interesting ideas of what's possible today, right? It might sound a little bit futuristic, but this is all uh, possible with today's uh, technology. So and, and give you some some uh, perspective of uh, of the possibilities and the areas that we're working on. So. Um, Transformers, we said, and language pre-trained models completely changed uh, um, uh, natural language understanding since 2018 to today, but how are they relevant to crypto? So we said that what everybody's doing today is sentiment analysis and topic analysis. There are many, many use cases that can be enabled with the, with the transformer architecture and, and the current set of technologies that we have. So things such as news, uh, summarization, question answering, generating text, and things like that. So let me walk you through these five scenarios and, and sort of explore how, how that will work. So imagine if, right, you could have uh, all the, the news from the top 20, 25 outlets summarized in three, four sentences. So you can, you can take news are repetitive between the crypt, the blog, coin desk, and other, um, and other outlets, imagine that, that if you have a model that could aggregate all that and then give you for the key news a three or uh, four sentence summary that you can clearly understand that, that gets the, the essential ideas of long form text and then point you to the, to the sources of that, uh, of that type of uh, summarization. So this, this type of transformer models, in this case, we're using uh, the, uh, the example of Google Bird, they come with an encoder decoder type of architecture that allows you to do that. So you can fit it like a large, uh, um, uh, a large piece of text and with certain parameters like the number of sentences that you would like, how many layers, things like that. It can output a specific summaries. And in the last few years, they have been an explosion in terms of models for text summarization based on the transformer architecture. So this is possible today. GPT-3 is just one of them. Google has this thing called Pegasus uh, that, is, that is really good. 
and pretty much any transformer architecture for language includes uh, text summarization. So this is a scenario, particularly in a noisy environment like crypto, in which there's so many opinions, so many perspectives of a given topic, like having this type of summaries could provide a lot of values uh, to users trying to understand key topics without having to, to read very long uh, forms of, uh, of text. Then one that I'm particularly excited about is this type of uh, um, uh, classification technique called one-shot classification. It is part of a deep learning discipline called one-shot uh, learning. And essentially, what allows you to do is look at a piece of text, let's say news, and try to relate it to key ideas, right? Whether it's, this is about a bullish market, this is about a, a bearish market, this is about risk, this is about trading and things like that. Typically, if you wanted to do that in traditional machine learning, you need to train a model, a classifier to do that in, in, those, in those terms, right? You start training it in different texts and you tell it, look, this is bullish and this is bearish and the model tries to learn. The thing with language pre-trained models is that because they have been trained already in a very large corpus like Wikipedia, right? The entire set of Wikipedia uh, knowledge, you can inquire, right? Hey, tell me if this text from Coindesk is about a bull market or a bear market. If this is traders, is about risk, is this positive or negative and things like that. And it will give you its best um, uh, shot at classifying that. That's what is called one shot classification because you're essentially giving them one example to refine the knowledge that the model uh, already, uh, already have. So the example here, is with an image classification techniques with two pictures of, of Brad Pitt. So essentially this model have been trained on a million images. And then you show a picture of Brad Pitt and say, is this similar to anything you have seen? And it will say, yes, about this. And now it knows that that's a Brad Pitt from their own, right? So that's a way it works. And this could be used today to classify news uh, about um, any type of arbit all sorts of arbitrary topics that could be relevant to the market. So if you're a trader, you're interested in news about trading. If you're holding a specific crypto asset, you're interested in news about the, the product are bullish or bearish or talk about risk about that, uh, about that crypto assets. So question answering is another super interesting, uh, uh, super interesting type of technique that you can use uh, today. So in, in crypto news, because it's related to market, we're reading news and we're constantly trying to extrapolate how would this news impact uh, the, the market is, is this, uh, could this cause a bull run or a bear uh, retracement and, uh, and things like that. What if you could interrogate the text in natural language, ask questions, right? And the, and the, and the news uh, and the, the algo will give you pieces of news, pieces of text that are relevant to the answer of that specific question. So I could ask, uh, has anything happened today that could drop the price of Bitcoin? And, and it will give me news that are relevant to that specific, uh, uh, that specific question. Uh, so this is possible today with transformers. So question answering, long form question answering, answering questions about long, uh, long bodies of text is one of the areas that transformers do excel, right? And, um, and uh, the, the way it works, you use this mechanism called approximated matching function that is trying, based on a given question, is trying to approximate portions of the text that match that uh, answer. Uh, Valeria is asking uh, that this mo transformer models are huge, and Valeria, you're totally right about that. Can you explain how they're actually trained? So I have a section about how to, how can you do this today in two slides, two more slides. So let me let me answer when we get to. Uh, to that point. So another interesting, uh, another interesting portion is text generation. So uh, today, let's say in Into the Block, we have over 200 indicators in a structured form, tables, charts, and things like that. And you need to look at a chart and try to figure out, okay, what does this mean, right? Like, uh, okay, this is going up, it could mean this and that. Imagine if I can fit data, like a tabular structure of that chart, and it could generate a textual narrative about that. So natural language generation techniques is one of the things that is included in language pre-trained transformer uh, models. So we can fit literally a table of things we, and some examples of narrative. Let's say that we're looking at a data set of blockchain addresses for a given token. 
And I fit those data sets with some narrative that indicate, look, when this is going up, it indicates that there is more activity in a given crypto asset and this and that. And the model will learn that and I can fit the data and it would generate a text on the other side that literally you can just look at the text and get an idea of what the chart is telling you. And that obviously you can, uh, uh, you can uh, fine tune it uh, from there. And then the last example I want to cover, the last scenario is machine translation. Obviously, many of us live in countries in which uh, there is uh, uh, that, that we speak very popular languages like French or Spanish or, or English. Uh, but there are many people in the crypto community that, that uh, uh, live in countries in which um, uh, they speak all sorts of dialects uh, and all sorts of languages that don't that they, the crypto news are not translated into uh, those languages. So doing machine translation is not particularly new, new, but if you think about most of the traditional machine translation success stories, they are between uh, popular languages, right? Spanish to French, English to German, uh, those type of things. But when you're trying to go between one of those languages and a dialect in Africa or Asia, uh, that's really hard because it's, it's very difficult to train those models to, to uh, in, in, in corpuses of those uh, dialects when, because they don't exist. Uh, there are not many books, there are not many public available data sets to train those models. So one of the things that transformers have excelled at is to be able to do translation between um, popular languages, uh, let's say high resource languages and low resource languages. If you want an example of this, that probably we all use, uh, uh, one um, one uh, um, digital assistant that is based on transformer models is Alexa, and Alexa is able to do trans Amazon Alexa is able to do translation between uh, a high resource language like English to a dialect in South Africa that nobody has heard about. And the way they did that is they trained a transformer model to be able to uh, take a sentence and map it to to many many dimensions to a vector of like a thousand dimensions, and then in that multi-dimensional space, like a thousand points, any translation should be close to, to that uh, to, to that point. So you're able to move, uh, you're able to give a sentence in any dialect and it will be able to translate just by proximity. And this is something that is possible with today's technology. So imagine getting crypto news across hundreds of languages in a very efficient, uh, in a very efficient way. Like what would that do uh, for, uh, for the market? So uh, going back to, uh, uh, to Valeria's um, uh, uh, question about these models are here, so how do you do this today? Well, today it, this is possible with today's technology. So uh, yes, transformers are still at the uh, domain of large AI labs, but today we have open source technology that has made this available to mainstream developers. So for instance, OpenAI has a, a, a way to access GPT-3 be an API is, is, is expensive and it's hard to, to get to them. There is a huge uh, waiting list that is possible. Uh, there is a company in Seattle called Hogan Face that, that is probably the most advanced, uh, one of the most advanced labs in natural language in the market. And they have, they have a large collection of this type of modes that you can download and use. It's expensive, computational expensive to use. Uh, there is an open source project called Tensor to Tensor in TensorFlow that you can use that is for transformer. There is FirstSec is a, a framework for transformer, so it's NMP. And there is an old Seattle-based company that was uh, created by Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, uh, called, called the Allen AI Institute. And the a Allen AI Institute has this framework called Allen NLP that already includes a lot of transformer technology. So you can use this, this is open source. Today, you can download it and use it. It might require a ton of servers in, in AWS to, to get it together, but, but you can actually use it and we are using it. So at Into the Block, we're taking advantages of these techniques uh, today. And we're gonna do a super exciting release on social analytics in uh, potentially before the end of the quarter that incorporates a lot of this, uh, a lot of this idea. So everything that I talked to you about today it's based on practical experience. It's based on things that we're doing. It's not things that we're dreaming about. Like we don't do that in the, in uh, in this type of webinar. So this is very pragmatic uh, uh, lessons rooted in the in what we have learned playing with this uh, type of models. So 
a quick summary before going to, to questions. And so uh, please start typing your questions. So uh, language intelligence is incredibly relevant in the current state of the crypto markets. What we have today across the board is all based on sentiment and topic analysis. I think that's what everybody is doing, including us. The next evolution of this is based on language pre-trained models based on the transformer architecture that was created by Google in, in 2018. The maximum expression of this is in models such as GPT-3. And those type of models enable all sorts of new capabilities that are just hard to, uh, to do previously. So th things such as text generation, translation, question answering, long form text summarization, they're super, super relevant in the crypto space. So that's a summary for today. That was uh, half an hour. I'm going to go to questions. But before that, I would like to announce our next webinar, May 19. Uh, my colleague, uh, my colleague Lucas Altamuro, uh, is going to be talking about the Bitcoin halving and try to put it in numbers and try to put some data behind it and sort of de de um, demystify a lot of the assumptions uh, and the narrative that are in the market around this phenomenon and try to put a very data pragmatic, practical perspective uh, around it. Um, so let's go. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a lot of questions, so let, let's just start going. So Valeria asked me about the uh, the size of the models. I think I answered that. Uh, you can you can use any of those uh, any of those frameworks and try to uh, uh, and try to to get it to work and refine it for a specific uh, for a specific uh, scenarios. Look, the the core is asking: Are models analyzing text like news tweets as well as technicals? Uh, no, technicals is a different thing. So, in technicals, you're crossing to to a to a, a domain of time series analysis, which is not language. But an interesting thing is uh, transformers have been applied mostly to language. The next area in which they're being very successful is computer vision, and there is uh, some initiative by Google and IBM of applying it to time series uh for prediction models and things like that and the, the initial results look uh, very good this is a research that we have been tracking uh for the last for the last few months andrew is asking from your experience what's the most promising type of ml model to extrapolate alpha this is uh uh this is uh, a little bit of uh it it uh depends right of uh, there is no magic answer to this depending on the data sets that you're using um, their models that are better uh, than others. So in, in everything related to markets is very time series based with some exceptions such as tax and, and news and, uh, uh, and things like that. In that area of time series, the dominant architectures have been recurrent neural networks, many, many flavors uh, by directional LSTMs, LSTMs, uh, CNNs and LSTMs. Uh, things like that. And as I said, their transformers are starting to make progress on that. Andrew also makes a comment about the predictions that we have on the website about the 50-50. Um, yes, so it's true that the, the predictive models that, that into the blockchain for retail, this is not what we're using on the quant side, they were, they were performing extremely well. In the last few weeks, the performance hasn't been uh, particularly good. They're recovering. Uh, but two things, right? This market is a little bit crazy. So uh, the, the, there, there have been events and behavior in the market that the models had not seen previously. So they, they have uh, uh, failed on that, but we have retrained them and they're getting better. And the other thing is we're extremely transparent about everything we do here. So we left those models running there and publishing the failures as well. So you, when, when they're working well, that they have been working well for about six to eight months, you can actually trust uh, those, uh, those predictions. Uh, Dimitro is asking, do you have uh, simple social sentiment indicators, maybe a dashboard? Uh, yes, so we have sentiment analysis in, uh, uh, in into a blog across a lot of assets uh, for Twitter and Telegram, whether those things are actionable or not, that that's really depends on the type of a strategy you're putting together. As I said before, to meet those reduction techniques of taking a big text and coming up with a number without a lot of contextual information, they haven't been proven to be very effective when it comes to trading. Like if you look at what a lot of uh, one funds in traditional capital markets do with this type of techniques is analyzing very punctual things like earnings reports or very structured things, but not like Twitter uh, or Telegram. But we do have it. Like you can go to, into the blog and, and uh, uh, you can find it. Uh, Diego is asking which one of the transformer models that you presented 
are you using there are several so uh, um, i cannot go into a lot of details here, but uh, translation, summarization, we're using Pegasus. We're using OpenAI GPT-3 for, for some things, and we're benchmarking multiple in different scenarios, and that, that is still unclear. Andrew say thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for uh, attending. Uh, but, but Alexander is asking, someone told me that GPT-3 is not usable for crypto analysis. Uh, GPT-3 is for text analysis, so you can use it to extrapolate all these things about news, right, topics and sentiment and summarize it and massage it. Whether it's useful and actionable for a specific strategy it highly depends on that strategy. I, I do subscribe to the thesis that most of this is informational and not tradable, but uh, but I don't think you can circumvent it to, to, to a single point saying it's not useful for uh, crypto analysis. Uh, Alexander say thank you, Roger say thank you, thank you guys for joining. Uh, Andrew is uh, uh, asking about our predictions with one hour. Uh, no, I mean, we have predictions for shorter time frames that we're using internally. The thing is for retail, the person who is looking at this, we wanted to give it a longer time frame because we think it's a better experience. Whether it's ideal or no ideal for trading, it highly depends on your specific strategy and, uh, and market conditions. How do you debug this kind of models with that? This is an awesome question, Tim. How do you debug this kind of models with this level of complexity? Yeah, good luck with that. They're, they're highly uninterpretable. So it's, it's very hard to look at what the model is doing and try to figure out why. You don't debug it. I mean, you can debug it, but it's, but it's almost impossible. What you do is you put a layer of interpretability on it. Like you use platforms that will help you visualize a neural network and see, okay, it made this decision here. And it's a lot of subjectivity. So you, you start looking at the outputs and try to reconcile it with the specific neurons in the network that make a decision. So they're good platforms in the interpretability space, like Fiddler, uh, that, that are doing an amazing job on this, but this is really, really hard. So Transformer is probably one of the most complex architectures that you can that, that you can visualize. So it's really hard to, to interpret. So that, that was an awesome question. Uh, Stefan say, thank you. Thank you, Stefan. So does Diego. Uh, let me switch here. Uluk is asking, do you think uh, this works for mobile apps? No, I mean, it works if you're calling an API, but you're gonna host a transformer model in it. It's too big for mobile or for mobile hardware uh, today. Um, and it's asking about some futures, the funding rate in some of our analytics. That, that was, that was uh, that's good feedback. Thank you, Uluk. Uh, if you guys are saying thank you, Francisco and, uh, and Thomas. So thank you guys very much. So, Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. We'll be uh, publishing the content in the next uh, in the next uh, few hours. If you have any questions about this, that's my contact information. They are into the blog.io. So shoot me uh, shoot me an email, and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you very much, guys.